right here I'm talking with Julia Golding. So good to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. Thank you. Last year um, I spoke with Jörn and at one point he mentioned you. So I will start with my first question because last year Jörn told me you have to ask Julia. <laughs> so um, I'm a big Lego fan but I'm also a big Star Trek fan. I like Star Wars as well, no problem. But uh, there aren't any Lego Star Trek sets. Do you think it is possible one day because we have a new movie coming, we have a new series? So what do you think is Lego of Star Trek? <laughs> I think firstly that it's a very interesting idea. Thank you for giving us the idea. Um, you know, when we develop our products, we always look at uh, what's popular, what's coming up, which themes we want to be tapping into, and what's going to ultimately create a great building experience. So I would say anything is possible. Okay, that's a good question. We can leave that. <laughs> okay. Um, but of course, there are many other themes. Um, we talk about all the classic stuff like Lego City and, of course, Lego Star Wars and other franchises. So um, which is more important? All the license stuff, all the license sets, or the original ones? Most important is kids and understanding what experiences they're into, what worlds they're into, what's important to them. So this is where it all starts, and that's why we start looking at play experiences. You know, a lot of kids, they really want to, especially at a certain age, they're really into understanding the real world. You know, a lot of kids love to play in the universe that they see out there, but it's kind of their interpretation of it. And that has been something that has grown and has, you know, been very much a, a you know, big part sta staple of the portfolio, like Lego City, Lego Friends brings that to life really well. We also know kids are into adventures. Um, Ninjago, homegrown theme, but you know, exa great example of that. And there's certain things that come and go. So to answer the question, um, you know, we will always look at what kids are into and how do we make sure that we balance the portfolio to give them as many differentiated play experiences as possible. Um, and within that context, part of that, of course, is also tapping into play experiences that are connected to the things that they see out there that they like that are more topical. But predominantly, you know, if you look over a long period of time, I think it would be a bit of a variety. A reality play, creative play, opportunity for them to actually express themselves in a more creative way, and completely new things like uh, Lego Boost, if it's all, you know, we showcase today. So there isn't a formula, but it's really around staying uh, very uh, connected to what kids are into. That's because um, my daughter, she's five now, she thinks it is Lego Star Wars. So she didn't know that there are movies out there. She thinks this is Lego. So it's all about the brick, right? It's absolutely about the brick, but it's about what you can do with the brick. And Lego Star Wars is a perfect example of what you can do with a brick that's really, really unique. Because, you know, I have two kids myself. I have a 15-year-old and a 7-year-old. And the 15-year-old grew up with Lego Star Wars. And, uh, you know, we lived in Japan when he was seven and eight. And I used to go to the UK and buy huge sets of Lego Star Wars and bring them to Japan because they didn't, we didn't have them in Japan. And that was his world. And he was, you know, he was... Um, when the, 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 the first episodes that came out, he already knew Star Wars because he experienced it through Lego. And now my seven-year-old is the same way. He's never seen one Star Wars movie yet. And yet he knows Lego, you know, Star Wars through Lego. And what, but what I think is really unique about this is, bec is that the Lego Star Wars experience is truly, you know, something very special because you can build these incredible vehicles, these incredible sets, these incredible world, worlds of the different episodes. And that is, uh, it's just unique to Lego. And that's what we strive for, right? Is to, is to get that right experience. Uh, and yeah, and of course it comes down to the brick. It comes down to what you can build. And when you build the Millennium Falcon or Death Star, you know, it's a different way of experiencing Star Wars. It's unlike any other kind of uh, toy connected to the, to the Star Wars universe. So I'm sitting here with Matthias, who is filming, and he is a Lego Star Wars fan. Also, he's collected most of the UCS sets, but he's missing one big set, the Millennium Falcon. So, Matthias, I will ask you a question. Is there any possibility or change, uh, change um, in the future that you think you will re-release this iconic set? We've seen the Death Star again, so is it possible? It's possible. 
Okay. It's possible. That's an answer, of <laughs> course. Um, so, but you've talked about Japan, where you lived yeah. uh, for for a few years, um, and I have been to a Warner event in Hamburg a few weeks ago, and I didn't know um, that Lego Dimension isn't released in Asia. It is just North America and Europe. So why? And are there other themes um, which are right now not released in Japan, for example? Um, yeah, it's, uh, the uh, what we what we need to be cognizant of is what's actually happening in each of the markets where we operate and what's important to kids there, how they engage and play, etc. And you know, when it comes to particularly digital experiences, it's also about the the, the um, uh, popularity of console versus mobile, uh, which also plays a role into that. But in terms of our themes in general. Um, we look at what's relevant for the kids in each of the markets. And of course, there's some uh, differences that we see. There's some things that are always the same or, you know, but for example, Lego City, Lego France, Duplo, they're relevant everywhere. <laughs> in every market, they are the biggest themes and kids are really into them. But uh, Lego Ninjago being a perfect example, Lego Ninjago is very popular everywhere, but of course super popular in Asia. It really connects both in Japan and in China, whereas some of the IPs that might be very popular in, um, in the West um, haven't made their way there, or there's a difference in terms of what kids are into. So we structure our portfolio. Uh, majority of it is absolutely global, but some things will be specific to the market depending on what kids are into. Okay, um, a few weeks ago um, I built a model, I mean I built a lot of Lego, but I still I don't remember which set it, it was, but um, I've read the package and there are parts in it of all five or four factories. Um, so how do you manage this? I saw China and the, the Czech Republic, a Belund of course. Um, how is it possible to produce the bricks and then you bring it together and it is um, packed where? Maybe you could explain this process to us. Well, we, it, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. I mean, a lot, um, we have uh, um, now a factory in China, in, in Zhejiang. Um, we have um, Kladno in, uh, in, in near Gaza and Billund in, 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 um, in Europe. And then uh, we have a Mont uh, factory in Monterey. In, um, and for the most part, a lot of the bricks that we produce will serve as the parts of the world where um, you know, where the factories are. Uh, we try to stay very connected to the, um, to the shelf, to the consumer, and to the shopper, and to the retailer, and make sure that we can service them in the best way possible. But when it comes to very sophisticated sets, which is probably what you are <laughs> building, um, there's definitely uh, some particular, you know, elements that will be specifically, especially decorated, and will potentially will have to use a machine that's only available in uh, Kladno, or there may be something very specific that comes from China from an external supplier, and that's where you, you know, in the more sophisticated and complicated sets, you might see that kind of a. Um, That, that kind of a combination. But for the most part, they will most likely, as you say, you know, how do you pull it all together? They will be packed and delivered in the factory that will be closest to the location. Okay, I was just wondering, oh my goodness, parts yeah. from all over the world. And so, Time's up. one last question? Yes. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and I have to, okay, um, my last question would be, uh, I'm a adult fan of Lego, I have two kids at home, and how important are those guys like us for Lego, all those guys who are running around at the exhibitions and stuff like that. Um, tell us, please. Super important. We love you guys. And we really are very committed and we listen to you. And we, we, we want to ensure that you also have all of the bricks that you want, which is sometimes <laughs> not, not very easy, but everything that you need in order to build your creations, because you have a massive role to play to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. And I, I say that wholeheartedly because when I go to Lego World and I see what what you guys build you know I take pictures of that and I bring it home and I say oh my god have you seen this and it inspires me and it inspires my children so you inspire your two kids but you inspire many many kids around the world so we really want to make sure that we nurture and uh, support your community. Julia thank you so much this is a little present from us this is our minifigure of our website. Oh, that's so super thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day.